Oh, you're right, guys. Up the frog and toad plot today. I've called it the frog and toad plot because there's so many of them. I've disturbed, or should we say, six, six, seven toads and three frogs so far. So we've got to be careful with the old streaming, you know what I mean? So today, I'm, um, this corner here is going to be trees. Um, I don't know if you can see that big lump of pile over there. That's, yeah. Don't know what to do with that. That's gradually going to get whittled down. In the moment, there's loads of marrows in there. But this is going to be like a tree corner, fruit tree corner. So I'm going to get four in today. I've got a fig and an olive, uh, a pear, you know, a plum and a cherry. They're going to go around here. And I'll show you the rest in a minute. Ooh. I've done a rudimentary plan, actually. Uh, like I said, everything I've done so far is temporary. There's the uh, fig and the olive tree in that little hole there. That's where Heidi, she's given me a, a white, white hydrangea, no, is it? Oh, I don't know, something like that. White budlia, sorry. <laughs> yeah, she gave me a white budlia, that's going to go in that hole there. But all this lot, um, all those runners, uh, the sweet corn, that's all going to, that's just temporary. Um, and what I'm doing every time I come up here, every single time I come up, I'm looking for perennial weeds as I look around and I'm trimming them. There's one over there by that black pole. Can you see it on the, just got a bank there? So uh, I'll do that in a minute. But for now, oh, for now, I'm going to get some trees in down here because there's no membrane down here. I can just lift that corner up and I get three in that corner. That big raised lump there is going to be a bit of a pain, but uh, we'll see what we'll do now. So I've got some compost, I've got some um, Mother Earth to go in, mix with the topsoil and some fertiliser and um, I think the best thing to do is stop talking and uh, get you to just watch me doing it all really. <laughs> right, here we go. Not sure what's in here actually. I think it's probably a dumping ground. Yeah. Oh, plant ties look. I'll tell you what though, at least it's topsoil. Quite good topsoil actually. There's a lot of roots in there, but because it's a tree area, I'm not too worried about it. 
Yeah, I'll tell you what, that ain't bad soil, that. Right? Okay then, we'll start off with a cherry. There we go. We've got some of these uh, it's Marshall's control release granules, blah blah blah, six months of nutrients, so just drop some of them in as well. Looking back over there, that's got to come a little bit higher yet, so. Okay, that's like one down, three to go. I'll give them all the water when I've finished. I've got this um, extra thick soft tie, seven millimetres. So it's going to stake, stake, tie it up with that for now. Don't make it too rigid because it needs a bit of wobbling to strengthen the stem up, the uh, trunk up. Right, that's that. Okay, so I can do the same with the plum tree. This is an opal. I'm going to put that there. Um, I shan't make you watch me do it because you've just seen me do one. So, back in a bit. Okay, then that's the, uh, the four trees in for today. Got an olive there, a uh, brown turkey fig there, plum there, and the first one I did over there, the cherry. I think that's about it for today, guys. I've got a rhubarb to go in, but I'm not sure where to put it yet. Because I kind of want it to be permanent, you know what I mean? But this, say so this area here, I think from here downwards, any more trees will go in this little angle here. So there's only be two more probably, it'd be an apple and a pear, probably. 
we'll see. Um, I've already bought loads of beds. Oh my god, I've got a bit of compost now. I need about uh, eight bolt bags of compost. Uh, I might just put the rhubarb on the end of those runner beans there. Because like I said, it's going to be a soft fruit area up to here. And that's what these, um, that's what these poles are for, to make the raspberry cane uh, trellis. Um, yeah, I'm going to put it in that corner there, corner of that bed, because the bed's coming up, but the rhubarb can stay there because it'll be in sort of like the soft fruit area, won't it? Yeah, right. Oh, that's nice under there. And this is, I think it's pink champagne. Oh, just champagne. Oh. Well, that's me done. Leave that there. Leave that there. Water that in. All right, guys. I'm gonna try and beat the weather. Got some um, successional lettuce to get in. Um, tell you what they are in a second. Oh, a bit feisty, these. Right. Let's get my tape on and have a chat with you. Here we are, right. Um, yeah, successional, plus there's a show in six weeks. Hope to get a few in there. So I'm gonna do the Ro Rosa de Trento, which I think is either that one or that. Oh no, that is, sorry, that is Marvel of Four Seasons. That's nice, that is. I might do that, I'm gonna do that one as well, anyway. <laughs> Rosa de Trento, Rosa de Trento. Um, Marvel of Four Seasons, Lola Rossa, which is always a good one, um, Apache, which is a bright red one, and a year round lettuce. So, yeah, I don't want to do any more of these. These um, RZ ones, they just take far too long to germinate lately. Um, they are old stock now, old stock for me anyway. So, usual routine with the Agrilan. Just gotta fill it up. It's a bit damp this compost, we have to give it a few tappings to get it in here. Ugh. The the bag's sealed, but it's just been out in the damp and it just seems to uh, hydroscopically attract moisture, you know. That's right, that's right. So oh, forget the corner ones too. I'm not gonna poke these down because like I said it is damp compost I don't want to compress it um, I've got a lid somewhere there we are. I've been using the, the lid for a, a bit of water storage actually for bottom water and so oh that'll do right um where's the cross there's the cross I'm gonna reinforce the cross And make a note of what they are. Usual routine, you've seen me do this so many times before. I might do an extra, because it's a show. Now this is weird, this is. When you do these uh, village type shows, they prefer, let's say, normal looking vegetables. So this sort of thing never does very well, but this sort of thing does. Even though this is a perfectly good lettuce, these seem to get more points. So I'll do an extra row of these. And they do look good, so I'll do an extra row of those as well. Right. One or two in each, if possible. I'll probably drop a few, as I always do. Can't see where I am now, second. Let's start at the beginning, Steve. One, three, six.
Yeah, there's going to be a few more than the two. But we can always thin them out, can't we? All right, that's them. I'll bring it back when I'm all done. I'm just going to gently press these down. I'm not going to, not going to push them in. Just so they're contacting the compost a little bit. Again, it's not going to matter, so I'm going to give them a spraying in a minute. But old habits die hard, don't they? Um, where is my fine vermicolite? Oh, here comes the rain. I can feel it on my head. I've actually got SP plant invigorator in here, but it's not going to harm, is it? I've broken about three sprayers this year. It's a case that you get what you pay for, isn't it? Right, in the greenhouse with that one. Right, and I've got some winter cauliflower and winter cabbage to go in now. This is very, very late, but it's an experiment because the seasons are staying warmer longer. So I'm wondering if we can plant them later, you know? I mean, some of these are about two months late, really, but we'll try. So we've got Rigoletto and Virtus, both Savoy cabbages, um, autumn giant cauliflower and all year round. So we'll get on with them. Oh, I just I can't beat this weather. Like I say, at least I've got the plot, so I can't grumble. I can grumble, but <laughs> at least um, I don't know if anyone knows that the peat ban's not going ahead this year. Well, probably not going ahead because it didn't get its second reading in the House of Commons because of the election. So a bit of good news anyway for me. Not for those who don't like peat, obviously. But <laughs> Oh, I'll give them a dimple, but I'm going to put these in a bit deeper if I can. And when it does get its uh, second reading, if it does, um, I read on one website that at least two or three MPs are going to shout object, which means that it can't go ahead without um, a deep investigation or something. So... Um, Seems like a few of them have come to the few of them are gardeners, they know, but a few of them have come to their senses and they realise that maybe it's not all as bad as it says it was. Especially seeing as that um, because of the threat of the peat ban, um, well, as you know, all garden centres have stopped selling the stuff. So, uh, you know, it's, I think it's, what they say it's 50, no, 73% reduction in what it was in 20. 19, I can't remember, what the, can't remember the dates now, but um, you know. And, oh, itchy head. Put compost over the top of this one. Right, in the greenhouse with them, um, fingers crossed they uh, germinate. Right, that's it for this week guys, hope you enjoyed it, usual sort of thing, bit of a mishmash. Sometimes it gets a bit difficult to know what to film because it's all been done before, but then again there's always new viewers isn't there? So. Yeah. Anyway, look after yourselves, take care, and I'll catch you on the next video.